Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to test and diagnose the throttle body when there is P0122 throttle position sensor circuit low input fault gun. Here's the throttle body right before the intake manifold. On the throttle body, we have one actuator and two position sensors. So basically, when you press the gas pedal for opening the throttle body, ECM activates the actuator. And for checking the throttle body opening angle, uh, ECM will read the output signal from throttle position sensor 1 and 2 that we call them TPS1 and TPS2. So basically by actuator operation, the resistance on each one of those two throttle position sensors will change and by changing the resistance, actually the output voltage will change. The reason that we have two position sensors because one of them is actually the backup for the other one. So right here you see the failsafe mode for TPS1 and TPS2 failure conditions. Basically, if TPS1 is faulty, ECM is going to look at the output signal from TPS2. Uh, still, you will have the fault code for TPS1, but ECM will use the signal from TPS2 to run the engine. If TPS2 is faulty, ECM will look at the signal from TPS1, but if both TPS1 and TPS2 are faulty, throttle valve will stuck at 7 degrees. So having the throttle body opened at 7 degrees is not going to be enough for feeding the engine with enough air. So as a result, in this case, engine speed will be limited to something around 1500. And of course, the vehicle speed will be limited as well to maximum 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. As you see on the wind diagram, there is one power supply and one ground for TPS1 and TPS2. They are using actually one power and one ground. So it just in case if any of these two, if the power supply and ground, if one of them is not provided for any reason, for wiring problem or uh, ECM problem, you will have both TPS1 and TPS2 faults and of course your engine RPM will be limited as well. But I'm going to show you how to test the power supply on them as well. So this power supply is provided from the ECM. So it's actually a 5 volt supply that you can measure it right after turning the ignition switch on. And for each one of them, there is one output signal, TPS1 and TPS2. But it's really important to remember that the output signal for these two sensors are not exactly the same. They are opposite. So when you haven't pressed the gas pedal, one of them is going to give you the low voltage, the other one high voltage. And I'm going to show you how to read them with the multimeter and a scan tool just in a second. So basically, if you have the fault code for TPS1, you need to focus on TPS1 output signal. If you have the fault code for TPS2, you need to focus on the TPS2 output signal. But if you have the fault code for TPS1 and TPS2, you need to focus on the power supply and the ground at the first place because, of course, if any of these two fails, both TPS1 and TPS2 will be out of work. All right, let's have a look at the scan tool, see how we can diagnose the uh, throttle position sensor operation by using the live data on the scan tool. So ignition switch is on. I have connected my scan tool. And as you see, I have selected these items, this live data for checking the TPS1 and TPS2 signal. So as you see, the first one up here, this is the TPS1 output voltage. I'm not pressing the gas pedal right now. So as you see, uh, the output voltage of this sensor is 0.79. And for the TPS2, the output voltage is 4.2. So you can see the TPS1 and TPS2 output voltage on different opening angle right now on the screen. This is exactly what workshop manual tells you. Let me just press the gas pedal right now. As you see, the gas pedal opening angle is just around 8 degrees. So I'm going to press the gas pedal right now and see what's going to happen. So the opening angle is something around 17. As you see, the TPS1 voltage is increasing, TPS2 voltage is dropping, right? Because this is what happens inside the TPS. When you are actually pressing the gas pedal, the resistance for TPS2 is increasing and the internal resistance of TPS1 is actually dropping. So that's why the output voltage is changing in this way. So if I press it more, I'm just pressing the gas pedal all the way. You see the opening angle is 100 degrees 
and right now the TPS1 voltage is 4.2 and TPS2 voltage is 0.78. It's still, if you add TPS1 and TPS2, you will reach to something around 5 volts. So if you read the value, if you see the uh, output voltage is not what you are after, so you need to focus on the sensor which is giving you the fault. All right, if you don't have the scan tool, right now I'm going to show you how to locate the wires on throttle body connector and then I'm going to show you how to test each one of them with multimeter. Okay, back on the engine. Right now I'm going to show you how to find the wires on throttle body connector and how to check the output voltage on each one of them. So you see the wiring diagram on the screen as well. So we have six pins on throttle body connector. I'm going to disconnect the connector first to show you all the wires. So starting from the left, this is pin number one. Uh, as you see on the screen, pin number one and two, these two, the white one and the blue one, these two are actually for the throttle body actuator. Number three, which is a gray wire, this one is actually the ground for the throttle position sensors. Number four, which is a pink wire, is actually TPS2 output signal. Number five, which is orange, this one is actually the power supply for both TPS1 and TPS2. And number six, which is a brown wire, this one is output signal for TPS1. So basically for checking the power supply, when ignition switch is on, you can grab a multimeter. On multimeter, select voltage. And as you remember, the orange wire pin number five is actually right here. This, is, this one is actually the power supply. So I can check the power supply between here and the body ground. So I'm expecting 5 volts, as you see on the screen. So this confirms that the power supply from ECM is provided. So if you are checking the power supply right here and you don't have the 5 volts, you cannot say that the ECM is faulty. You need to check this wiring between here and the uh, ECM connector to make sure there is no short circuit or open circuit. So if there is no power supply, on this pin, you will have the fault code for TPS1 and TPS2, and engine RPM will be limited. For checking the output signal of TPS1, the connector must be connected. I need to back prop the TPS1 output signal. I'm actually using the back prop. I'm back propping the brown wire, which is TPS1 output signal. After back propping, select the voltage on multimeter, put the red prop on the signal and black one on a good ground. So as you see, we are reading 0 0.8, exactly what we measured on the scan tool. So again, very same thing, you can press the gas pedal, and when you are pressing the gas pedal, you need to read exactly same value like what we read on the scan tool. This output voltage should increase on TPS1. All right, so you saw the output voltage on TPS1 when I press and release the gas pedal. If your reading when you check with the multimeter is okay, is exactly according to the workshop manual, but you still have the fault code and your reading on scan tool is different from what you, when you read on the throttle body with the multimeter, it shows that there might be some problem on the wiring or on the ECM. So we don't know which one is faulty right now. You, you cannot go for replacing the ECM. Maybe maybe problem is on the wiring. So for that, you need to check the signal on the other end on ECM side as well, just to make sure that the voltage delivered to the ECM is exactly what uh, throttle body is generating. So for that, back on the wiring diagram, you see uh, TPS1 is actually connected to the ECM through a brown wire on EGGAA connector, pin number 12. So basically, if you locate this one, you can check the TPS1 output voltage right over there as well. For finding this one, you see the EGGAA connector details on the screen right now, and pin number 12 is just right here. So this is the ECM. This one is actually EGGAA connector. We are looking for pin number 12 
with a brown wire. You saw the connected details on the screen and there are some numbers over here as well. This is exactly pin number one right here. And if I count, this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is the this is pin number twelve. So I'm gonna back prop pin number twelve. Just right here, do it very carefully. So this is for TPS1, and as you remember, the output voltage for TPS1 was 0.8 when we are not pressing the gas pedal. So select the voltage on multimeter and read the output voltage over here. And black one on the good ground. So as you see, we are reading exactly same value. 0.79, is, this is exactly what we read on the throttle body. So it means the voltage that TPS1 generated is already delivered properly to the ECM. If your voltage reading on the throttle body side was exactly okay, but when you check the voltage on the ECM connector is different, it means the wiring between the ECM and the throttle body is not okay. And you need to check the wiring and get it fixed. But if voltage here is okay, but you are still reading something different on the scan tool and you still have the fault code, most likely your ECM is faulty. So this is exactly the step-by-step -step diagnostic for that one because you need to check the throttle body first, the wiring on the throttle body side and on the ECM side. In this way, you can come to a conclusion which one is actually faulty. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic video and subscribe the channel to get the notification when we publish new diagnostic videos. Thank you very much.